Hey guys, this is Trent. This is going to be an unboxing of the N97 Mini made by Nokia. I read a few reviews from some friends of mine on Twitter who did say that the build quality of the N97 Mini was much better than that of the original N97, being that it had metallic components added onto it. That a friend of mine on Twitter basically said that this is a combination of both the E71 and the N97. So we're going to go ahead and do the unboxing. And then on the side here, you have Nokia N97 Mini. So now we're going to go ahead and open up this bad boy. All right, and you have the usual website notification there. Now the first thing you see here is the battery along with the handset itself. The main difference so far is that there is not a separate stylus included with this handset. A BL4D battery, which is rated at 1200 milliamp hours. This particular model may not have as much power capacity as the BP4L, which is rated at 1500 milliamp hours that comes with the N97 and the E90. I am still interested to see if it can do well on its own in giving the N97 Mini sufficient power throughout the day. We of course have an AC adapter along with the micro USB data cable with micro USB. New addition that is introduced with the N97 Mini. A brand new headset that features in-ear headphones from Nokia. Now, another great addition to this in-ear headset happens to be the remote control. The remote control itself has three tactile buttons for your play, pause, fast, forward, and reverse. And then on the back, you have a belt clip. And then on the side, you have a call button, as well as a rocker key for your volume. There appears to be no way to use this remote control with any other kind of headphones. But at the same time, that's not really a problem because I usually use the in-ear headphones anyway, and um, I am happy to say that I won't have a problem at all using this particular headset with the N97 Mini if it happens to have great listening quality. Additional earpieces that are of different sizes. The OV Suite from Nokia, which isn't needed since I use uh, the Missing Sync application. Some information for um, some kind of uh, technical support for this device. Some marketing information for games and applications. And last but not least, we have the N97 Mini User Manual. This is the Nokia N97 Mini, and I have to say that so far, it feels very high quality. It doesn't feel too plasticky. The weight of the phone feels very impressive. It's as if it was made for the E series and not necessarily the N series. very impressed and very happy to see that there are metallic elements added to this device to amp up the high class quality of its build. Not that the original N97 didn't do any justice, but the fact that you're paying money for a high-end device, you expect for it to feel like a high-end device at the same time. 
there are still some plastic elements on the device itself at the top and the bottom, but it's not a huge prevalence of plastic like there was on the original N97. It's very small, and I think I've never held the 5800 Express Music model, but from what I've read on online reviews, it's about the same size, if not exactly the same. Here is the front face of the N97 Mini. At the top of the device, you have your usual components, proximity sensor, earpiece, as well as a secondary video camera along with an ambient light sensor. Then you have your usual main screen, which is a little bit smaller than the original N97, but I don't think it's going to be too small to where it makes it a pain to use for, you know, website navigation or any kind of other interface use throughout the day. At the bottom of the front face, you have your call button and end button, which are both touch sensitive. Being that Nokia has made the improvement of making the entire menu key a notification light is really a great improvement and I'm looking forward to seeing it over my two weeks of using this device. On the left side of the device you have a lock switch as well as the typical micro USB port for any kind of charging or connecting to your computer. And then at the top part of the phone you have a stereo speaker here as well as another stereo speaker on the bottom part of the phone. Now at the bottom part of the phone, you don't really have anything except for an eyelet that's used to connect um, some sort of a wrist strap. And then on the right side of the device, you happen to have a physical camera shutter button. Above the shutter button for the camera, you have tactile keys that operate as volume controls. At the top, we have the typical power button as well as a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Now on the back of the device, the first thing that comes to sight is a sticker with instructions as to how to take the battery door off. Alongside the battery door, you have your typical Carl Zeiss 5 megapixel autofocus camera along with dual LEDs for flash. There isn't any sort of physical protection with a slider to go over the lens when the camera is not in use. The QWERTY keypad mechanism is just as robust, if not more so, than the classic N97. And the one thing I am noticing is that the tilt doesn't appear to be as pronounced as the old N97 either. The QWERTY keys on this model appear to be a bit more raised to provide better tactile feedback. There is an absence of the D-pad, which used to be on the left side on the classic N97, but on the N97 Mini, they've done away with the D-pad and instead have included directional buttons which I think should operate just as fine as the D-pad on the old N97. I am very eager to test out this QWERTY for the next two weeks to see just how reliable it is in comparison to the original N97 as well as the HTC Touch Pro 2. Now, I'm going to say right now, I don't think that there's a comparison to the HTC Touch Pro 2, but I think that these keys will do some justice to the original N97 with its better tactile feedback. On the back of the hinge itself, you have Nokia N97 Mini, and then you have Designed in Finland. I just read here on the back of the box that my unit is made in Finland, so... Um, any of you guys who happen to have a model that, that's made in Asia or any other part of the world besides yeah, Fen, as long as it's a Nokia device that cuts on and works properly with the proper OS, you should be just fine. You know, typical smartphones usually don't come with a large storage capacity for any kind of, you know, media files or anything like that. So I'm happy with the 8 gigs. You know, going down from 32 gigs is not going to be that big of a deal, I don't think, as long as I've got my 16 gigabyte micro SD card. You have the Nokia branding and the N97 moniker at the top of the screen instead of off to the side of the screen like on the old model. Once again, this is the N97 Mini. I will come back with another video letting you guys know what I think. That will be all for now. This is Trent signing off. All of you guys, take care and stay safe.